As a framer user, I've always wanted to add more dynamic elements to my sites. Recently, I discovered a game-changing tool called Moder that lets us add logic to our framer projects without writing any code. And I don't want you to miss out on this. In this quick guide, I'll show you exactly how to use Noder to transform your static sites into dynamic ones. You will learn how to connect different nodes to achieve things that weren't possible before in Framer. We'll cover two practical examples, simplifying CMS collections on the Framer University site and automatically generating text-based avatar images from names. So before jumping into the first section, let me introduce myself. My name is Nandi. This is Framer University and let's get started. So let me quickly show you what is Noder and where you can find it. So if you go to noder.framer.website, it's going to be down in the description, so you can also just click there. You're going to land on this site, um, which basically just um, is a landing page for Noder. But the main part here is that you can remix it, and, you know, you can get all these little Node components. And it just shows you like different examples of what you can build with it. And yeah, actually it's created by Victorian, so feel free to check out um, his personal portfolio and whatever, like Twitter and stuff like that. This is a really cool project by him. So once you got this, you kind of have to understand what you can do with it. So let's go to store and we can actually see all of the available nodes here. So you can see that there are three categories. We have output, input and transform. So you basically generally start with an, um, an input. So you place an input node on your canvas somewhere, maybe it's like a value, and then you do different transforms to that value by connecting these nodes. So maybe you have an input that is like 10, then you do, do a transform to it, maybe like multiply, you multiply it by two, and then you're gonna output with the output node here, the, the text, which is like the result of 10 multiplied by two, 20. So basically that's how it works. You just connect these nodes and, and yeah, that's it. It's pretty cool. And I'm going to show you now how I utilized it on the Framer University site as an example. So if you go here, we can see that I have this resource page, which I have for all of my resources on Framer.University. And you can see all of the creators are listed here as you know created by and all the names. Uh, the way I do this is I create a CMS collection called people where I just input all of the people that I, you know, I need to use on these different resources. So if we jump back to Framer, we can go to CMS and to people and you can see it just has a bunch of people in here. And the way I had to set up these CMS collections is by creating a full name field and then the first name field. Why? Because here, when I hover over, I want to show the full name. But here, I just want to show the first name. And just because of this, I had to literally create two text fields. So every single time I add a new person, I have to go add full name and then copy, paste to here and delete this, which is you know not a long time, but still it would be nice to just get away with a full name and then display only the first part if I want to. And well, Noder helped me with exactly that. As you can see, we have these little text layers here. The Nandi one is always there because I'm always part of the creation process of these resources. So these other names were also just simple text layers and their content property were sourced from the CMS. Um, basically, all the co-creators are added uh, with a reference field. So I just clicked here, content, set variable. Maybe I search for co-creator co-creator and then co-creator two uh, and first name and basically that's how I set uh, one, one of the co-creators first name but now since I don't want to do this I had to create a component and within that component I can do you know the magic uh, with Noder. So as you can see we need three nodes. We start with the value node on the right. If you think about it, what is the value? Well, the full name is the value and we want to transform that, you know, data and just only output the first like word from that value that we put in. So the label here is going to be set to name and then here the value will be given as maybe um, Daniel or jo let's just say John Doe. That's a little bit easier. So 
we have this value here and of course this will be turned into a variable so we can change it from the page level here but for now let's just test it like this john doe uh, so this is our value this is then connected to this find node so i'm going to just connect here to this value so now this value is going into the find node and here comes a little bit of a tricky part because we have to write this regex like definition uh, that basically just picks um, the first word from from this data and of course i don't know how regex works so i'm going to just use ai for that so i'm going to pull up ai and i will say uh please write a regex definition that only picks uh, or returns the first word uh, or yeah first word of a name basically that's it it shouldn't be you know over complicated uh, we just copy this and hopefully it's gonna work let's paste in here um, now in theory we are only returning the John but we still have to connect it to the output node which is right here on within the actual component so this text output will be connected to the find so it displays what we get from the find it has a placeholder value here so on the canvas here we cannot see if it's actually working we have to preview it uh, and yeah as you can see it says john pretty cool right uh, and if i change this name here so something though only something will be written here really nice so in order to make this dynamic and you know work in the context of the cms i can just turn this into a variable this can be called full name and then all i have to do is go back here and then just connect the full name to the correct co-creator so co-creator one full name is set right here so as you can see now it shows priyanka i connected the full name i didn't have to use the first name field that i created i can just delete that from the cms and i'm using the full name but i'm just displaying the first word of the full name now what i'm going to do is i'm going to go through each of these names and connect the right co-creators first uh, sorry full name because then we're going to see a little issue So I connected all of them, so it should be nice and dynamic pulling data from the CMS. As you can see, for this specific example, I have listed two co-creators, Priyanka and Danielle. And it is working perfectly, it is getting the full name and just displays the first uh, word from it. Works really nicely, however, there are two co-creator slots that are set to empty by default. I don't want to go too deep into how this is set up, but basically each co-creator that is not added is by default set to this empty item, which is actually defined in the people uh, CMS collection. And based on this, I can basically set conditions uh, on the canvas that if it is empty, then just do not display it and stuff like that. Uh, but because of this, you know, it is just displaying the empty like word. But if it's empty, I don't want to display anything. I just want it to, you know, stay empty. So what I can just say to AI is that please modify this to make sure that if the value is empty, then do not return anything. So now it's going to modify it for us. As you can see, here is the modified regex definition and i can just double click back into this component and i can change the regex here i can just paste it in there and hopefully this is going to solve our little problem now you can see that no it's it now says name the reason for this is because the text output has a placeholder here which is name uh, that you know just shows up on the canvas because as i said it only works in the preview and not on the canvas i can just remove this placeholder leave it empty so until it loads it's just not going to show anything and when it finally loads it's going to show what it should show and you know based on our new regex definition if it's empty it's just not going to show it and as you can see it works perfectly to show you another example we can go onto this other project 
where I have this little card. And this is just a profile card where I can change the name here. So I can also say John Doe. And you can see that the name changes here, but the letters in the little avatar is not really changing. I want to say J and D here when I set John Doe. Well, with no there, we can also create this really easily. So basically, the again, the value, the input will be the name, and we can connect the you know the variable that we already created for the component you know that we were controlling here in the right panel. So this is what the value will be. We are connecting it to again a find node where we set a regex definition again. So what we want now is set and just select the first letter from each word. So please write a definition for selecting uh, selecting only the first word, uh, sorry, letter from each word. Let's see, there you go. Here we have it. We can just copy and paste it in here. And then we can connect this find to this output, which is right here. We can just connect and hopefully it is going to nicely work and exactly now it says jd but if i set it back to nandi mushik it's gonna nicely say n and m so yeah as you can see you can do a bunch of things with this nooder and this is just two examples you have so many different options if you take a look at all the nodes that are available it seems like that you can also arrange data sets into like bar charts which sounds pretty uh, interesting. And yeah, you can use all of these nodes to, you know, to create something cool. So yeah, I think that's it for this video. I really do hope that it was helpful. If you have any questions about Noder or, or yeah, anything, feel free to drop them in the comments. Also check out Framer University because I have a bunch of other like resources that you can remix and copy components that are probably going to be useful for you. And you can also find other tutorials and lessons on the website. So, so yeah, that's it for this video. Make sure to like it, subscribe for more, and I'm going to see you in the next one.